Today I will be talking about memory sample lower bounds for learning with classical quantum hybrid memory. It is a joint work with Ren Raz and Wei Zhan. I would like to give special thanks to Uma who participated extensively in our discussion. This talk and the slides are based on the previous slides by Wei. Let me talk about the main takeaways from the talk. A small linear amount of quantum memory does not help speeding up or reducing classical memory for parity learning problem and many other learning problems. And in other words, for many natural learning problems, having access to a small amount of quantum memory does not change the nature of the problem. So let us look at one example in this talk, parity learning problem. Our result will apply to a broader class of learning problems. For this problem, there is an unknown n-bit string x. Every time, a learning algorithm will receive a uniformly random n-bit string a and the parity of its inner product of the unknown string x. The goal here is to recover the secret string with limited working memory and samples. Here are two example algorithms. So the first algorithm is you can store linear numbers of samples and use Gaussian elimination to recover the secret x. This requires linear samples as well as quadratic space, as each sample requires uh, basically linear space. And another extreme case is just to be lucky. You can just see uh, different samples until you find a string A is an indicator. And in that case, you learn one bit of x. And by simply repeating that, you will learn every bit of x. And this takes exponentially many samples, but only requires linear uh, space to restore the answer. So it is interesting to ask if we can use subquadratic memory and polynomial samples to learn the secret bit string. And in 2016, Russ proved that uh, to learn the secret x, a learning algorithm requires either quadratic memory or exponentially large number of samples. And in other words, both algorithms we mentioned before are tied to these two extreme cases either quadratic memory or exponential samples, which completely helps us understand parity learning in the classical setting. And in the classical model, to uh, bound the quantum, uh, to bound the memory sample trade-offs, we use layered branching programs. These are directed acyclic graphs with uh, these nodes arranged in layers. And you start with the first node on the leftmost side. And depending on the first sample A1 and B1, you branch out to the nodes in the next layer. And similarly, if you are in the middle of the graph, you also branch out depending on the current sample. And the nodes on the last layer output a guess of the secret vector x. And in this model, the length of the branching program equals to the number of samples uh, this al uh, learning algorithm needs to see. And the width is, uh, is basically 2 to the size of the classical memory. And in this model, we do not care about computational power. And in other words, we don't care about whether this transition from one node in the, previous uh, in the previous layer to the node in the next layer is easy or difficult to compute. We only care about the total number of samples and the total amount of memory. And in this work, we are curious about whether quantum can significantly change the nature of this parity learning problem. And to put it more concretely, um, we propose the following question. Is there a quantum learning algorithm for parity learning problem, takes sub subquadratic quantum memory, and polynomial amount of samples? And this question is a win-win question. Because if the answer is yes, meaning there is a subquadratic learning algorithm that solves the problem with polynomial samples, then parity learning uh, problem itself becomes an unconditional uh, exponential separation for classical and quantum learning algorithms with bounded space. Previously, we do know such separation, but only for inherently quantum learning problems. Well, um, basically the samples are given as quantum states. And therefore, it is somewhat natural to um, see differences with quantum or classical memory for learning uh, with these quantum learning problems. But we do not have any example for classical learning problems. And we believe that it will be very exciting if parity learning problem can be such case, can provide such a uh, separation. And on the other hand, we have evidence that parity learning 
can be this yes case. It can be this yes uh, instance. This is because if we can prove such a separation in the regime that the quantum learning algorithm has space logarithmic in time, which is not the case for parity learning, then it actually implies a much stronger separation for decision problems that BQL, which is the quantum log space, is not equal to BPL, the classical log space. As parity learning does not fall into this category, does not fall into this case, there's still hope to prove such separation for parity learning. And um, if the answer is no, meaning subquadratic quantum memory algorithms require polynomial samples, then first of all, we have a very nice addition of unconditional lower bounds for quantum algorithm for classical problems. And also, as we know that algorithms and cryptography are two sides of the same coin, we can convert these lower bounds into cryptography that is secure against adversaries with bounded quantum memory. And previously, there are already many cryptographic works based on RAS original results. And if the same lower bounds or similar lower bounds hold for quantum memory, then we can directly lift almost all these protocols and make them post-quantum secure namely secure against quadratic classical memory plus um, also uh, quantum memory, quadratic amount of quantum memory. In this work, we make progress towards understanding parity learning with quantum memory, and we prove lower bounds for learning algorithm with hybrid memory, meaning uh, it has access to both classical and quantum memory, but the amount of classical and quantums are different. Namely, we show that um, and in, learning, and in quantum learning algorithm for parity learning requires either quadratic bits of classical memory or linear amount of qubits of quantum memory or exponential amount of samples. And let me give um, a slightly more detail about the model we consider. Uh, first of all, we consider the learning algorithm is working with an m-bit classical and q-qubit quantum memory row. Here, um, this row is basically the to describe the whole system or the whole uh, set of the learning algorithm. And it can be seen as a tuple, w and v. Well, w is a m-bit classical string, and v is a q-qubit quantum state. And putting it more formally, we can um, also view this row as a whole, and then the density matrix of this whole quantum state, the whole system row, is indeed a block matrix. And this block is the classicalness for the W register. OK, so that, that's uh, we could get a slightly more formal. OK, and then next, by getting each sample A and B, the learning algorithm applies a channel controlled by the sample you received, controlled by A and B. And it must satisfy that for any such MQ hybrid uh, row, the resulting state after you apply this um, channel of uh, uh, phi AB is also MQ hybrid. In other words, this channel must preserve classicalness for the system. And indeed, our model is a bit stronger than you may imagine. Our result holds even if this channel used a lot of quantum memory and classical memory during its computation. But as long as the channel preserves the classicalness for the output, then our result will hold. All right, so more formally, we consider this quantum branching programs. It starts with an all zero uh, quantum state. Here, the state is, uh, you can think about it as a hybrid memory consisting of m-bit classical memory and q-qubit quantum memory. And every time a sample A1 and B1 is received, or AI or BI is received, it applies a channel controlled by the sample and a uh, 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 condition on the resulting system is also a hybrid memory. And finally, a measurement is applied and at output a guess. So this is the model, the quantum branching program, the learning algorithm um, we are uh, thinking about. And our result says that um, even a small, basically a linear amount of quantum memory does not help speeding up or reducing classical memory needed for parity learning problem. And finally, we can also extend the result to all learning problems as long as these learning problems are represented by extractors. And due to the time limit, I will briefly mention it at the very end. 
And in the talk, I will mostly focus on the lower bound for running algorithms with only linear amount of quantum memory, completely ignoring the classical memory. And I will prove the following. Quantum learning algorithm for uh, parity learning using only quantum memory, it needs either a linear amount of quantum memory or exponential number of samples. Indeed, here we are proving something stronger. We prove that even to learn one bit information of the secret X, this learning algorithm still requires a linear amount of quantum space or exponential number of samples. Because, you know, if the goal is to recover the whole secret X, and if you only have less than n, um, like n qubit of quantum memory, it is even difficult to store that answer, which has n bits. And this fact makes the bound trivial if we are, you know, our target is to recover the whole secret. So here, we focus on even learning a single bit. And in the extra proof for hybrid memory, we need to modify the original proof by RAS, which are quite different from the one that I will explain. But I still think the linear quantum memory bound is interesting itself, and it gives you a sense on how extractor helps you. And the intuition is as follows. A sample um, A uh, and X times A already needs n plus 1 qubits to store. And if you have a much smaller space, say um, epsilon n, well, epsilon is smaller than 1, then you cannot even store this sample. And the information you can store about x then is actually exponentially small. In other words, we are going to prove that whenever, uh, whatever happens, your quantum memory will depend very little on the secret x. So to prove it, we examine the dependence of learning our learning algorithm or any learning algorithm and the secret. So we use this notion rho xv to denote the joint system of the secret x and the quantum memory of our learning algorithm at any given step. So it can be uh, the, the the rho xv can be the whole system at the first step or at any intermediate step. And first of all, if we look at the subsystem on X, which is denoted by rho X, it is indeed a classical register, consists of a uniform distribution over all n bit stream. This is simply because our learning algorithm is local and won't change the distribution of X. So the distribution of X is determined at the very beginning, which is uniform. And next, we define the measure of a dependence as follows. We define it as the minimum distance between the joint system rho xv, which is the state of our learning algorithm and the, and the target uh, secret. And another system, well, uh, x and v are completely independent, which is denoted by uh, the second term in the, in the definition, rho x tensor with tau for some tau. And if this distance is small, then it means that the learning algorithm should be very close to learn almost nothing about x, because the, the, the state of the learning algorithm is completely independent of x. And we want to prove the following. If the joint system xv starts with zero dependence, in other words, the quantum memory condition on uh, different secret x are the same, then after receiving one sample, it involves into another system x and v prime. Here, v prime denote, uh, denotes the, the register after you apply a, a operation uh, based on the sample you received. Then the dependence still remains small. Here, I use a square, a bunch of squares to denote different quantum memory for different secret x. But as we um, assume it, the system starts with zero dependence, they remain the same. And we want to show that the increase on the dependence is at most 2 to the epsilon, which is the following. So, um, yep. And if we can prove the previous statement, we can use the standard hybrid argument or a triangle inequality to bound the dependence for each step. So basically, we start with zero dependence. And every time, by the previous lemma, the dependence increases by an exponentially small amount. Then we can simply use triangle inequality and we pre pretend the dependence of the current joint system is zero by paying a cost which is equal to the dependence in the last stage. And then we apply the lemma again. And therefore, the final dependence at uh, stage t is at most t times 2 to the minus n. 
so long as t is small, the learning algorithm learns very little about x and cannot even guess a single bit information about x correctly. So finally, we need to prove the lemma that the dependence increase exponentially slow. And to prove it, we model the parity learning problem as a matrix, while the columns represent secrets and row, and the rows represent random A. And you can think about it as a function with input x and input a. And the entry m of x and a equals to the inner product between x and a. And we see this matrix is a strong QR quantum extractor if the following holds. First of all, you are given the full information about uh, the input x. And you are given the Q qubit quantum uh, state that only depends on a. Here, Q should be at least smaller than the length of the original input A, because otherwise, you can simply let this quantum register store the whole A, and the entry M of X and A is trivially known. And when you are given both X and the Q qubit quantum state, the strong quantum extractor, the strong QR quantum extractor says that you, um, you still learn almost nothing about this entry M, X, A, and more formally, this m, x, and a is still 2 to the minus r close to uniform. And we know that parity learning is indeed a strong quantum extractor, with both q and r being linear in n. The idea is that by the definition of extractors, if we are given x and the quantum register w, the value of the extractor should be close to uniform. And it means that the mutual information between the extractor and the register xw should be exponentially small. And we can further show that m and w is almost independent of x, the secret x. And in other words, the mutual information of x and mw is very small. And this bonds the dependence between x and mw. But um, what the quantum register w is in our case? As we start with a system that is independent of x, um, we can simply let, uh, let tau be the quantum memory from the previous stage. Then we let w be the two possible quantum states depending on possible inner product between the secret and a. And namely, we let w be the states after receiving the sample a0, tensored with the state after uh, getting the sample a1. As long as our learning algorithm uses at most q over 2 quantum bits, then this m is still a quantum register consisting of at most q qubits. And finally, we realize that um, the quantum memory in the next step can be decided entirely from uh, the inner product mxa and also entirely from the quantum register we just proposed, which is w, because we can simply by looking at what is the, the value of mxa and we pick the right quantum memory from one of the quantum state in W. And therefore, we have that the dependence between x and vt plus 1 is upper bounded by the dependence between x and mw, which is exponentially small, as we proved. So our learning algorithm cannot predict even a single bit of x, as it is almost independent of x. And this is the entire proof. And finally, let me briefly mention our last result, which extends the lower bounds to all learning problems represented by extractors. Indeed, to prove our lower bounds for hybrid memory, we need to use two source classical extractors instead of quantum extractors. It is a purely classical extractor, very similar to quantum extractors. We say a matrix M is a KLR extractor, if given a k-bit classical register only depending on x and an l-bit classical register only depending on a, the value of mxr is still 2 to the r, uh, minus r close to uniform. Gok, Rez, and Tao prove that for a learning problem represented by a KLR extractor, a, cl uh, a classical learning algorithm requires either k times l classical memory or 2 to the r samples. And in this work, we show that even with limited hybrid memory, a learning algorithm cannot work. And specifically, either you need k times l classical memory 
or R quantum memory or in exponential samples in R to solve the problem. And finally, I want to say that our work makes the progress towards understanding parity learning in the quantum setting, but still we did not prove or disprove the following conjecture. Any quantum learning algorithm for parity learning requires either quadratic quantum memory or exponential number of samples. We believe it is a very interesting open question and we encourage everyone to explore this question. Thank you for listening.